we have now successfully cracked all the passwords, all the hashes. But what happens to those hashes? Do they just get discarded? If you don't have a terminal history that goes back thousands of lines, how are you supposed to remember all these passwords that get cracked? Well, they get stored in a file called the john.pot. It's John's pot and it's filled with passwords. And you can find this usually just by doing locate john.pot. Whoops. You may need to update your DB first. You can do sudo update DB and that will update your file system sort of handles and tell you where everything is. But you can see there that I've got a file called john.pot. And if we grab that, we can cut it out and it will show you every single password that you've cracked. You may need sudo though, depending on where it is. And you can see there the passwords that we've just cracked recently. And it's never gonna give you up. Okay, I'm sorry. I do you know what? No, I'm not sorry. I don't care. It was worth it. Um, which honestly, I'll tell you something weird as well. I actually deleted all these <laughs> hashes that I've cracked. You can see there, biscuit, kangaroo, microphone. These are the ones from Try Hack Me, as well. Uh, you can see there. I've <laughs> Yeah, I've got loads of passwords in here, and I've deleted this file, but for some reason it's repopulated it with all the hashes that I've ever cracked, and I have no idea why. I think it's because I deleted the one in my home, home directory, but I didn't delete the one in the root directory, and now it's getting all the passwords from the root directory whenever I run John. So if I deleted the one in the root directory, then it would probably all be fine. Anyway, you can see there... All the passwords that you've ever cracked so if you're trying to do a report you can come back to here and you can cut out all these passwords and uh, put it into a report so you don't need to worry about memorizing them or taking the tool output you just grab them from the john.pot put them into your report although you probably might actually want to redact the actual passwords unless you're trying to prove how easy it was to hack and that they're using passwords with very low complexity I've barely scraped the surface on what John the Ripper can do. Again, it has so many tools that you can get uh, with Jumbo John. So there's there's a tool that will get a password hash for a zip file. Uh, I believe it's called Zipped John. And there's one for a RAR archive as well. A password protected RAR archives. I think it's called John uh, RAR to John or something to that effect. And what it will do is it will look at the file. It will get the password hash from it. And then you can crack it. And then you'll be able to get into that zip file or RAR archive. And again, I've only really looked at the word list options, but I believe that's going to be enough to sort of get you going. Um, there's a lot more to it, and you should definitely get into it and look into the other options, like the incremental options and the single crack modes. But the word list option, I feel, is going to be the most commonly used one that you'll need to use on sort of pen test jobs. If you're able to get a dump of hashes whether it's from like a backup found in like an unsecured nfs directory or something like that then the word list option is probably going to be good enough to see you through you'll be able to put those hashes into single files into one file itself and tell it to crack and there's a lot more to it that i haven't explained like there's hashes like ntlm hashes and things like that that you could catch with repeater that you could then crack, you know, if you're performing a man in the middle attack or sniffing network traffic somehow, then you could capture these hashes and crack them with John. Now, John is great. It's, it's an old program from 1996, but they have continued to update it. And it does primarily use the CPU. And I know a lot of you are going to be saying, well, why don't you use Hashcat? Well, no, I love Hashcat. Hashcat's great too. It does use the GPU if you get the drivers configured correctly. But John the Ripper is an age-old tool like Kane and Abel. You know, it's got a fun place in my heart. And if you're just trying to crack a few passwords there, like you just saw how quick it was. I hadn't cracked those hashes before, but because the word list, or because the actual password was in the word list, the CPU churned through it and gave me the password. 
And I'm, this is on a virtual machine, so I don't even have all the cores available. I don't have all the processing power available of my actual machine that I'm running the virtual machine on. But it's just a great tool to use if you want to try and crack a few pass with hashes granted if it's not in rocku.txt uh, you can use the incremental cracking type methods but again those could take forever if we don't actually know the rules the complexity requirements of the password but john the ripper is a fantastic tool and it's one I use all the time whenever I find a password hash or whether I'm doing capture the flag challenges. I will go to John the Ripper first. I'm going to do a video on Hashcat in the future, so how to set it up. I currently have it installed on my base and I'm using it for Windows. I'm having a bit of few issues with the drivers, but yeah, this video was a focus on John the Ripper. Hashcat will probably be one of the next videos I do in the tool scenario. But check it out, get it installed. This is a great tool and it deserves a lot more love. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, kind regards.